Hello, my name is Karen Morris, and I'm a docent and um, volunteer here at the Course Gold Historic Museum. I grew up in Oakhurst, and my mother grew up here in Course Gold, and I've been here with the museum about 12 years and created this historic village to represent the Native American people that lived here in this area. So I'm doing a, um, a little talk about how um, the Indian people lived a little bit about how they lived in cedar rock teepees and in live oak houses in this area. And um, we're going to show how they would have made acorn mush, cooked it, cracked it, gathered, and all those things. And for a family, they'd go in the fall, they would gather their acorns when the acorns are dropping from the trees, and they go up in the high country to get the black oak acorns. They're the best kind. And they would... Um, the whole family would go and they would gather a lot. Um, for a family of five, you would probably need about a thousand pounds for the whole year. This is from the fall to the next fall when you start running out, when you run out in the summer, usually. So you'd need a lot of acorns to feed your family for the whole year. And these black oak acorns are really good. They last a long time. These that I have right now were gathered about two years ago, and they're still good. You can crack them and you can still use them. We made flour for them just the other day. Uh, so they're the best kind. In our village here, um, when the family would gather their acorns, they would build an acorn granary. And this is a tiny replica of an acorn granary. Uh-oh, they're all gonna fall out if I touch it. Um, it wouldn't be open like this. It would be all enclosed with cedar boughs, wormwood that would keep the bugs away. And then later on when they got burlap from the white man, they put burlap on them. But they would be big. They would be tall as me. They would be big around. And they would maybe have three or four or five of them on their, you know, where they were staying stored. And it would be a, something like built like this. So that's why we have that here. So when you have, you're getting ready to cook your acorn, you get some out of your granary and you have to break them open. So I'll just use these here, Fran. This is my granddaughter, Franny. She's going to show about cracking them. Okay, have a seat here. We use a rock pestle, we call it. And go ahead and crack that one. Use this rock. And you crack the acorn. And then once it's cracked, it looks like this. And you take the insides out, and it looks like this. And it has this little red skin on it that you want to get off and it'll peel off. But this winnowing basket is what they use and they use it like this and shake those acorns. And then you get that skin to come off and you want the skin all off like these. These we clean and they're all clean and they don't have a skin on them. Um, so then when you get them to that point, then you're ready to grind them to make flour. And it's the flour that you cook in the basket. Okay, that's good, friend. Okay, so now Freddie's going to show you how they pound acorn in the mortar rock, the granite rock, with the pestle. Keep going, friend. So they pound and pound, and during this time when they're pounding the acorn, the mothers would be out here with the girls, and this would be a great time to tell stories, to teach the girls things that they wanted them to know, um, to sing songs while they were doing this, because, you know, like we are here today, it's hot, and um, they would get tired, so they had to kind of keep them going and telling them stories, singing songs with them, and have them sing along with them, and then that passed the time faster and they got their work done, and they were able to teach the girls things that they wanted them to know. Also, if men weren't out hunting, they would help with this process of grinding acorn, cracking acorn, cleaning acorn, all those things that they needed to do, because it was a family, um, a, all the family worked together to do this. Okay, so we'll pretend that we got our flour all pounded, and it's all as fine as we want it, and so we take it to the leaching bed because 
Okay, Frank. You can't just eat the acorn pounded like that into flour. And this is an example of how fine, it can be finer than this. This isn't quite as fine as you, you would, sometimes it'd be great like this, but you probably want it a little bit finer than this. But it's just, this is acorn flour and this is what you get when you grind it. So then you take your flour to the leaching bed. And years ago, before they had this claw, this cheesecloth, they would just use cedar boughs and they would stack them up and they'd usually be by a creek because they need a source of water and they would dig a round hole in the sand like a like a little pit and then they would clean it all out they would use cedar to help with the leaching process but they would do it on the ground but now that we're older and my husband made me this leaching bed so I don't have to kill my back we use this leaching bed so, okay, friend, you hold this. So we use the cedar, here's one more, to keep the water from just washing the flour away. And I just brought water bottles because we don't have a creek nearby here. So you just leach it and you just wash it, really. You're washing the flour to get the tannic acid out of it. Because the tannic acid will make you really, really sick. And some people say it's poisonous and maybe you could die, I don't know. but it'll make you really sick if you don't wash this flour. So they would wash it and wash it over and over and over and taste it in between to see if it was, if all the tannic acid was out. And it's just bitter. That tannic acid is just bitter. So they would keep washing it until they got that out. And then once they got it out, okay, then they would take this and they would put it in their basket so you can gather it up. They would put it in their basket. Okay, we'll go down to the fire. So then you're ready to cook it after it's all been leached and all the bitterness is gone. Okay, friend, come on down. And then they would use this cooking basket. This basket has been woven really tight and you would soak it in water, put water in it and soak it so it would the fibers would swell up and it would be watertight. So you put your flour in here, you add your water, however much you want, you got your fire going with your little hot rocks in your fire there. And that's what you're gonna cook with is the hot rocks. So give me one of the hot rocks. And we put it in with the flour. We've got flour and water in here. As Soon as you put it in, you have to stir it a lot because it'll burn the bottom of the basket if you just let it lay in there because they're red hot, these rocks are when they come out of the fire. So you stir and stir and stir with the stick. And when this one gets cold, then you take it, you take it out, put it back in the fire, get another hot rock, and then you put that in, and then you stir and stir and stir, and this'll get bubbling. It'll get bubbling, boiling from these hot rocks. And you just do that process over and over until you get the acorn cooked the consistency that you want it. Sometimes people want it thinner for a drink, Sometimes people want it thicker for acorn mush, and you can even make what you call like a biscuit with it if you make it thicker and you just spoon it out, kind of roll it out so it, it's a biscuit. Um, so then that's how you have your acorn, and then you're ready to eat it. You can eat it with um, stew or any chili beans. It's really good with chili beans really good with the, the main course of your meal. It's high in protein and um, it's good. We have it at gatherings all the time. When people get together and have food, they usually have bring, someone brings acorn and it's very healthy for you. So that's how we make acorn at our village. So this is the Course Gold Historic Museum. It started out on this property in 1990. They bought the barn and it was just a mess. It was an old, old little cattle ranch with a barn on it and the adobe right behind you. Um, before Highway 41 was put in down below us, the road came right through here, right through this property, the old wagon road. So this was a freight wagon stop, this adobe building. It was built in the late 1800s and um, that was there by itself. The wooden part of it was built on in around 1900, early 1900s. And so we had these three buildings. And then after they bought the property, they brought 
uh, they moved the Picune schoolhouse from up the road by Quartz Mountain. They moved it down onto the property, and this is the Picune schoolhouse here. And then about um, seven years ago, we got the wood from the Vita Ranch barn that was built in 1938 on the Vita Ranch. We salvaged the wood from that barn, and we built a blacksmith shop. So those are our buildings that we have here on the property. And then in this room, the first room we come into in the museum, Grand Pumitipa. Um, this is our Native American room. And in this room, we have um, artifacts, we have baskets and basket making supplies, and um, all different kinds of baskets. And everything in here has been donated to us. We have beadwork and yarn work from the Wyatt family and baskets also from the Wyatt family and from Julia Parker. We have one from Sandy Clark, who is a North Fork Mono. Um, we have the walnut game down there from Julia Parker from Yosemite Valley. She made that, and we got that from her. And so, and then we also have shells because years and years ago, money was that we didn't have money. We had shells, and the Indians traded with shells, and they would measure them on their hands, and certain measurements were worth so much. So that's how we did that, and we traded with the um, coastal Indians for shells, and we had things here that they didn't have, so we'd get salt from them, shells from them, and they would get things that we had here. We have berries and plants and things that they don't have on the coast. And then we have um, more grinding rocks here in our display, different kinds um, for cracking acorn. We have these little ones that you can crack acorns. You've seen they've been used for many, many years because they have these indentions in them. And these are, um, all these things were found on people's property when they're building their houses and they donated them to us because they knew that we were having a display here at our property. Our newest thing that we have here, let's go around here. If you want to show this, is the uh, arrowhead display. And this big um, collection was found over 20 years by two ladies that were hiking in the mountains. And they found them over that 20 year period and they kept them, preserved them, took really good care of them. And then last year they donated them to our museum. And so we put together a display of them. And we also have a map here on the wall that shows where they were found. Um, according to the little numbers that are on the tags, you can see where they were found up in the high, and these are up in the high country where they found them. And then this is our wall of Chickchancy people from the past, our ancestors and families. So we wanted to make sure that they were up here and represented at our museum. So anyway, this is how you start into the museum. And then in the second part of the museum is more mining um, and ranch. This is ranching display over here with ranches. You can go down that way. Okay. And then mining, because we are at the end of the um, gold mining trail, as you would call it, or something where they were, you know, they started up, up north Sacramento, and then they came down here. And coarse gold actually got its name from the type of gold that was found in this coarse gold area. And over here on this side, we have a great display of pictures of coarse gold from years ago. This is um, 1860, 1870, 1877, 1927, through the years, how the town changed. This is an aerial view, which is really great. And this is Highway 41, what it used to be through the town of Coarse Gold. And this little well was in the center of Coarse Gold. Up here's a picture. This is the pump from that little well. And we have it here at the museum. So this is a kind of a story of Coarse Gold and all the different things and how it changed into now what it is like a town. This is a replica of the Coarse Gold Market that was built 
um, by docents, volunteers. In fact, our um, museum director and her husband built this facade for us. And so we have this, and it kind of shows how the little store was and how things were displayed on the shelves. It was a two-story building at one time, and there's a picture here. And um, they had dances and things up in the upstairs part of it. And then the bottom part was the store and the post office. And there's a that's probably a good picture there of it too. And then a painting that someone did of it here. 